Dear students, welcome back to the second podcast of Chapter Eight: Vital Villages, Thriving Towns of History for Class Six. The next topic is the coins. You may have noticed how wealth is measured in terms of coins. Archaeologists have found several thousands of coins belonging to this period. The earliest coins, which were in use for about five hundred years, were punch-marked coins. They have been given this name because the designs were punched onto the metal of silver or copper. The next topic is cities with many functions. A single town was important for a variety of reasons. Mathura has been an important settlement for more than twenty-five hundred years. It was important because it was located at the crossroads of the two major routes. of travel and trade from the northwest to the east and from north to south there were fortifications around the city and several shrines farmers and herders from adjoining areas provided food for people in the city mathura was also a center where some extremely fine sculptures was produced around 2000 years ago mathura became the second capital of the kushanas mathura was also a religious center there were buddhist monasteries jain shrines and it was an important center for the worship of krishna several inscriptions on surfaces such as stone slab and statues have been found in mathura dear students these are short inscriptions recording gifts made by men and sometimes women to monasteries and shrines these were made by kings and queens officers merchants and craftspersons who lived in the city now the next topic is crafts and craftspersons we also have archaeological evidence for crafts these include extremely fine pottery known as the northern black polished ware it gets its name from the fact that it is generally found in the northern part of the subcontinent it is usually black in color and has a fine sheen the archaeological evidences for many crafts may not have survived we know from many text that the manufactures of the cloth was important there were famous centers such as varanasi in the north and madurai in the south both men and women worked in these centers many crafts persons and merchants now formed associations known as shrinis these shrinis of crafts persons provided training procured raw material and distributed the finished product then shrinis of merchants organized the trade shrinis also served as banks where rich men and women deposited money this was invested and part of the interest 
was returned or used to support religious institutions such as monasteries students now let's have a closer look on arikimedu arikimedu is located in pondicherry earlier it was a coastal settlement where ships unloaded goods from distant lands a massive brick structure which may have been a warehouse was found at the site other finds include pottery from the mediterranean region such as amphor tall double handle jars that contain liquids such as wine or oil and stamped red glazed pottery known as eretan ware which was named after a city in italy this was made by pressing wet clay into a stamped mold there was yet another kind of pottery which was made locally though roman designs were used roman lamps glasswares and gems have also been found at the site small tanks have been found that were probably dyeing vats used to dye cloth there is plenty of evidence for the making of beads of semi precious stones and glass